So we actually cannot leave to Port-au-Prince until the morning because it's already 6 p.m. And if we leave right now, we'll get there while it's dark. It's about a six hour road trip. The source of power for the gangs tormenting Haiti. An arms race to create an arsenal that ensures control. A report released last March by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime finding the principal source of firearms and munition in Haiti is in the U.S. and in particular Florida. I suppose though, for talks to take place, the weapons would have to go down. Mademoiselle and Sassy Dizium Chanel Nguyen. And Jodia, as you guys can see, we're doing another update video. I skipped last week because honestly, I just got overwhelmed with all the bullshit. All right. As you guys can see by the title, we're going to touch briefly on the YouTuber that claimed that they were kidnapped by Haitian kidnappers in Haiti. I was honestly kind of trying to wait out the situation because allegedly he has returned home and is going to drop a video about his experience. Honestly, I'm just so tired and overwhelmed with all of the people trying to capitalize off of Haiti's demise because it's something that happens all too often. And I'm just, I'm just so tired of it, okay? And I know so many of you guys have been hitting me up. You're telling me to make videos. And I just do not want to give this man any attention because I do not believe any of the bullshit he's saying. In my opinion, I feel like the shit is a setup. I feel like he probably met up with a couple of people in Haiti and they decided to shoot some footage and make it seem like he was kidnapped. However, if you guys are not aware of what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this YouTuber called Your Fellow Arab who took a trip to Haiti. He um, apparently entered through the Dominican Republic. He wanted to do an interview with Barbecue. And um, in the process, he allegedly got kidnapped in the Haitian desert. So we actually cannot leave to Port-au-Prince until the morning because it's already 6 p.m. And if we leave right now, we'll get there while it's dark. It's about a six hour road trip. How many times in your life are you the only person in an entire hotel because the country's completely shut down, no one should be coming in, and you're just a retarded YouTuber? I feel like we gotta take advantage of the pool. Yes, the Haitian desert that we do not have, okay? Um, last I checked, Haiti don't got a desert. Correct me down below if I'm wrong, okay? Maybe he just thought it was a desert, I don't even know. And while he was kidnapped, there were other influencers that knew about this and they were trying to keep it under wraps. They were accusing the United States government of not trying to help him in this situation. And um, they were asking for ransom, only some of the ransom was paid, so they were not letting him go and then um, he was released then Haitian authorities arrested him and he was sitting there tweeting talking shit calling Haiti a shithole country and then had to double back saying you know he's made content on Haiti before and said amazing things about Haiti like honestly it was a shit show nonetheless I was not about to sit here and make a dedicated video about this however if you guys do want me to react to whatever caca he puts out I'll do that for you guys you know I'll sit here with my bob and cool and um, with some popcorn and we will react to it because I'm not going to sit here and put too much time and effort um, into giving attention to somebody who exploits people's countries for views and likes. Because if you guys go look at the man's content, that's literally what he does. He's been to a few countries from Mexico to Jamaica, sitting here interviewing cartel members, um, people um, in Jamaica, you know, Rastas and shit. And I just I don't like the content. I, he just seems like a, a, a clickbaiter and a clout chaser. I just don't like people like that. But if that's what y'all want, I'll 
I'll see if it's worth my time when it comes out, okay? If it's too long, I ain't doing it. We'll see what happens. So let me know down below if you guys believe he was actually kidnapped or not, because personally, I think it was a whole load of caca. And of course, piggybacking off of that, Port-au-Prince has been in disarray and a lot of the disarray has spread throughout the country. However, it's hard to tell exactly what's been going on. Like I've mentioned in a lot of my other update videos, it is believed that a lot of the Haitians are taking back their country. They're taking back their villages and their homes. I've been mentioning for the past year or so that a lot of Haitians have been forced from their homes from the kidnappers. However, Bar Barbecue had mentioned not too long ago that he was releasing all of the kidnap victims. But what's very interesting about this is he wasn't really specific about this. The government Marie Henrion, ancien député, ex sénateur qui volait l'argent pays ça et que nous connais vrai ennemi nous yo. Nous connais monde qui mène pays en là. Mais cependant, gon équipe qui est malheureux et malheureux qui déchouqué, qui crasé, ça vraiment fait nous mal. Et nous, les populations civiles, là, on est que, objectif là, il va y au même, et que c'est pas ça que nous t'es souhaité. Et n'a profité, et de conférence de presse, ça, je vous dis, Mathieu, pour nous dire, monsieur, bien, ça, m'l'a mis, yo, les, nous, là, 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 monsieur, s'il vous plaît, protégez les populations civiles, là. S'il vous plaît, évitez d'entrer dans le caille, moun, à le faire des choucailles. Nous regrettons ça qui passé, dans Delma 3, Delma 5, Delma 20, pour nous citer ça, eux, seulement. Et nous coupons nous bien bas, nous présentons excuses nous devant tout le monde. Nous nou vivons ensemble, nous ne voulons pas ici encore que nous nou demandons au pardon. Pardon pour tout ça que la société a jugé et que vivre ensemble, c'est faire qui mal. Et nous avons tout profité pendant que nous demandons société à pardon pour tout ça que vivre ensemble fait qui mal, pour nous tout annoncer que tout monsieur qui fait mauvais action qui fait que nous trouvons que vivre ensemble fait nous mal, il prend sous responsabilité aujourd'hui pour qu'il y ait une action qui qu'on commet pour ne pas commettre encore. Dans nos vivons ensemble, et tout le monde qui a subi le kidnapping, je pense que tout le monde s'est libéré bien rapide et les familles n'ont pas bien 5 ans pour payer. Et dans nos vivons ensemble, pour équipe mauvaise pratique, et qu'on a passé dans une série de zones, et que le chef dans zone, le leader dans zone, il prend sous responsabilité et que pour ça, il ne pas répéter. Et nous sommes humains, nous sommes moun, et nous avons fait n'importe quoi. Mais ce qui est important, il faut que nous apprenions à pardonner, il faut que nous apprenions à vivre ensemble. Ce qui est important, il faut que nous apprenions à vivre ensemble. Vivre ensemble, nous n'avons pas Vivre ensemble pour nous changer le pays, vivre ensemble pour nous l'autre Haïti. Encore une fois, nous-mêmes, nous vivons ensemble, nous avons côté nous aller, nous avons côté nous voulons arriver. Was he releasing the kidnap victims under his charge? Were all the kidnappers, gang members, criminals, bandits, etc., alike going to work together and not kidnap anyone anymore and release all of the people that were being held captive? Because I literally have two people in my family that have been recently kidnapped after this announcement has been made. And on top of that, the violence has not seemed to calm down. Like I said, again, in one of my recent videos, we have to very much so question everything that we see in the media regarding Haiti. A lot of the people are fighting back and they're not playing any games in regards to barbecue or any of these gang members. They are arming themselves against the gang members while the gang members are now arming themselves against the civilians. This is why you are now seeing lots of very horrid images of civilians out on the streets. But it's actually very sad that, you know, I mean, I can't really blame either side because while the fight was supposed to be everyone versus the government, can't really expect them to fight with the gang members because the gang members have been harming them for the past 
fucking few decades, okay? You can't really expect people to fight with you when you've been fighting against them for so long. Regardless of what the reason was, it just is ass backwards. You can't expect these people to join you and fight the higher power when you have taken their homes, their children, their birthrights, their fucking inheritance at this point. It just doesn't really make any logical sense. So at this point, it's literally the people versus the gang members, the gang members versus the government. But at the same time, the gang members are defending themselves against the people because I mean, the people are coming after them. And it's just very disheartening because it'd be great if everyone could just come against the common enemy. But now the gang members have always been their enemy because they've been working for the government. And I, I don't know if this is ever going to stop, but of course we do have Caracom with a solution that absolutely no one has asked for. If you guys remember, we've been talking about CARICOM, which is that whole board of people who make decisions for the Caribbean, which to be quite honest with you, I'm not even gonna talk about my opinion about that because I've already talked about it at length in other videos. Let's just get into the point. There was an idea to have a seven to nine member transitional committee in Haiti in order to make decisions in place of the president until they have an election. And uh, when they announced what would be the board, we all know that it was literally like playing musical chairs. They could not agree on what the board would be because people were dropping out left and right because threats were made on their life. Some people were upset because they would not have an important position on the board. And when I say seven to nine, I mean seven people would have voting rights, two people would be just overseeing the board. Honestly, apparently they finally come to a decision on who the board is going to be. And, um, like I said, okay, this is something that the Haitian people did not ask for. And to add insult to injury, this board will remain in power till February 2026. Last I check, it is uh, 2024. The nerve gall audacity to give the Haitian people something that they did not ask for, for them to specifically say who they want in power, which is Guy Philippe. Do I think it's a good idea? Absolutely not. But they keep telling you guys what they want. They have continuously said, this is what we want. This is who we want. We want an election. This is who we want. Even if they, like, even if Guy Philippe is not president, they want an election. You guys go and drug up a board. You're talking about, oh, this board is going to be here till February 2026. At this point, you signed their death warrant, okay? Like, literally, you guys are asking for bloodshed. That I just, it doesn't make any sense. People do not listen to Haitian people whatsoever. And it's wild because I've been, like, looking into Haitian politics just like, you know, looking at the past. I've literally sat there looking at the past from like 1700 to like 2001 to now. And I'm like, damn, you know, people really never listen to the Haitian people. But now looking at this shit in real time, I'm just like, bro, these people are really telling y'all all they want is an election and y'all go swoop over their head, pick a board full of people that aren't Haitian, bro. Okay, maybe had a few Haitian politicians there that first of all won't even address the Haitian people to give them any bit of hope of what the fuck is going on in the country. Pick a bunch of people, who the fuck? Y'all child, honestly, all I gotta say is, when shit start going left, y'all better not say it's because Haitians are never satisfied because the Haitian people keep saying what they want. Bro, you could go on any Haitian page, okay? Whether it is an American base page, like a Haitian American base page, American media, French media, Canadian media, any page, you will see at least 10 comments saying Guy Philippe, Guy Philippe for president. What is this? We don't want that. Like, it's just, I don't, oh my God. Like, it's so infuriating. Like, I just, child, y'all just want problems. Like, it's just, it's so sad because it's going to cause unnecessary bloodshed and it's gonna cause more people to talk more shit about Haitian people and say that we're this and we're that. And it's like, nah, y'all just don't fucking listen. So at this point, whatever happens, happens because y'all should have just listened the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, two hundredth time. Anyways, child, what makes it worse is, you know, United States is adding fuel to the fire because now they've agreed to finally, after all this time, fund Haiti's police force. I know I said that that's where the money should go, but at the same time, this is not the time for that because Haiti really don't got police compared to the gangs, bro. 
They gonna take the motherfuckers out and then take the weapons. Bro, just say you are giving the Haitian gangs guns without saying you're giving Haitian gangs guns. This is literally an excuse to just give them weapons um, legally at this point, okay? It's no secret that most of the weapons that come into Haiti are coming from the South, mainly Miami. With them just sitting here saying, hey, we're gonna give Haiti weapons so that they could fight all of the corruption. Um, no, I don't believe that, okay? We're, we're just gonna give them more ammo so they could kill themselves and we could steal Haiti's resources. Let's be fucking for real. In the northern part of the country where companies go to mine gold, when they take the gold out, they don't do anything with the salt to assist the people that are living there. And beyond gold now, the other resources that are critically Petroleum. important. Oil. Um, Haitian geologist says that Haiti's oil is bigger than Venezuela's oil, which has the biggest cachet. Haiti, also, you have to understand, how, where, how does oil come? Haiti is on a tectonic, four tectonic plates, making that oil, massive oil, because that's how, the, that's how, what's the same thing with the Middle East, okay? But another thing, Haiti has an extraterrestrial material that is found nowhere else in the world, except South Africa. It says one ton of Haiti's iridium. Iridium. I wanted to get to Iridium. That. Specifically, in other news, there was a weapon seizure in Okap just recently. And you already know, when weapons are seized, so much more have been passed through. All of these intended to be shipped to Haiti. What looks like a high caliber gun show is instead evidence seized by Homeland Security investigations in Miami. Is this a daily occurrence that you guys are finding weapons? It's a very regular regular occurrence. It, it sometimes daily, ebb and flow with it, but yeah, it wouldn't be uncommon to get daily weapon seizures coming out of Miami. This is one of the weapons seized by U.S. authorities. It's a 50 cal Barrett anti-material rifle. This can shoot through walls, cinder block, and vehicles. If purchased legally in the U.S., it'll cost about $12,000. It's estimated a large portion of those weapons are smuggled on freighter ships that depart from a five-mile strip of the Miami River that also serves as a port of entry and exit to Haiti and the Caribbean. The ones that you saw are only a little bit of what was caught, okay? So it just makes you wonder, who the hell are sending these weapons? How the hell are they getting past customs? How the hell are they making it to the border? What about the ones we're not seeing? Hmm? Like, it's just absolutely crazy to me how people aren't looking at that a lot more than anything else. Like that needs to be addressed. How are they getting weapons? How are they getting ammo? How are they getting vests? Like, bro, Ezo got tanks, bro. Oh my God, I can't. Oh, I'm so exhausted. And more sadder news. Remember that canal that the Haitian diaspora built with our hard earned money. The Dominicans had the nerve, gall, audacity to sabotage it like I said they would. Yes, I did. If you guys didn't watch my video about the canal, yes. I actually really did say in that video that I had a really bad feeling about it. So the Dominicans are out here doing the most. Who is surprised? I'm not. But luckily, Mother Nature will be Mother Nature and canela uh, popcorn pear. All right, rain, water, and other natural factors will always keep the canal running. And there's other people working on different water routes to definitely connect to the canal. So the canal will always be running. For me, it's just the nerve gall and audacity of the Dominicans to even do some bullshit like that because the reason that river is even called the massacre river is because um the Dominicans had the nerve to sit there and um kill Haitians because they couldn't say parsley do you guys remember huh Dominicans never forget okay you guys like to remember that for whatever reason you have two independence days which is pure bullshit Remember why the fuck this shit is called Massacre River. Massacre River creates an international border between Haiti and the Dominican Republic on the northern part of our island. This infamous name comes from colonial times. In 1728, Spanish settlers killed, they massacred 
30 French buccaneers at this location. That name became popular once more in 1937 when that river became red with blood once more. But this time, it was the slaughter of Haitians. On the orders of Dominican dictator Rafael Trujillo, the Dominican army killed between 12 to 30,000 Haitians in less than a week. This was an attempt to keep unwanted Haitians out of the Dominican Republic. Countless mutilated bodies were thrown into the river, which turned it red and solidified the name, the Massacre River. Today, there's conflict once more at the Massacre River. Haitians recently began constructing a canal in Haiti that will use the water from the river in order to help them irrigate their crops. Dominicans say that diverting water from the river is illegal. They say it's a violation of a 1929 treaty signed by both nations. Article 10 of this treaty establishes the right of both nations to fairly and equitably use these waters. But Dominicans say that this canal is a threat to the environment and to Dominican farmers. Haitians say this canal is essential to their survival. They need it to irrigate their crops. They say that Dominicans already have several canals that are connected to the river, and since construction is happening in Haiti, they should have the right to build. Haitians also say that Dominicans are reacting out of fear. They may lose a vital part of Dominican agriculture. Haitian farmers. These farmers now will have the opportunity to farm their own land with this canal. It's important to note that this canal is not being built by the Haitian government. It's part of a larger movement of Haitian civilians taking action and no longer waiting for the Haitian government to fix their problems. Talking about some, we violated a treaty, ja, 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 ja. You guys don't want Haitians in your country, but um, we try to make something so that Haitians don't go to your country and then you go and you sabotage it. Make it make sense. And for those of you guys who are typing angrily down below, I love Dominican people. I have so many Dominican friends. I grew up with a lot of Dominicans. So this is for the people that are hateful, racist, problematic, and don't know their history. Suck your mother, get mama mal propre sans avis, okay? Thank you very much. Moving on. There's been reports of gangs, bandits, and rebels ransacking very important buildings in Haiti. So we're talking about libraries, museums, and such. Now, it is believed that a lot of this is actually fake news. So with that being said, there's gonna be a lot of things in my future videos that I actually skip because I either cannot confirm or deny or simply because I personally do not think it's true or there's people that I asked um, living in Haiti that are just like, yeah, no, that's actually not true. If you guys have never heard, there's actually this theory that a lot of times when we see interviews that go on in Haiti on the news, they're actually fake interviews, okay? It's believed that sometimes they actually pay people to like lie and say fake shit. It is believed that sometimes when you see a lot of these gang members, they're actually not really gang members. A lot of times when they're saying, oh, the vandals and the rebels and the gang members, blah, 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 are destroying shit, it's actually not true. So you need to really like take a lot of what you see with the grain of salt okay when they're saying such and such has been arrested such and such has been apprehended again sometimes you really have to triple double whatever check it um when it comes to a lot of them destroying artifacts and blah 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 it's not always what it seems or sometimes when they say it's gang members it's rebels or when it's rebels it's actually gang members so again go double check go triple check um because a lot of times it's not always what it seems now i'm saying this mainly in regards to barbecue now y'all already know my stance on barbecue um as well as um guy philip i personally don't think either one of them should be president however i feel like when it comes to the media they're definitely painting them both to be monsters now i already know clearly both of them have done some very questionable things but um i'm going to play a, a few clips from this interview recently that really is pretty interesting here um because it makes you wonder like okay what the hell is really going on here now i'm not saying everything here is 100 percent true True, but it makes you really think like there's people in Haiti that are living in pure chaos but there's also people in Haiti that aren't okay same thing with the whole situation of people going around saying oh people in Haiti aren't getting food and people in Haiti can't get resources and people in Haiti can't get any medical attention and people in Haiti can't get basic resources is like hmm well, we're right in the heart of Barbecue's gangland territory. And I have to say, the atmosphere here is very different to large parts of the rest of Port-au-Prince. It's much more chilled, much more relaxed. There's aid distribution. It's not chaotic. What the sense you 
get from this is that people feel safe inside here. Inside his territory, despite the poverty, life is relatively peaceful and organised. Unlike in much of Port-au-Prince, queues for food, barbecue gets brought in, are orderly. Usually it's chaos. But here people wait knowing that there are enough supplies for the whole community. And this is a source of barbecue strength. To the outside world, he may be a gangster, but here he's a sort of Robin Hood. All the way to the bridge? Yeah. Barbecue sees himself as a revolutionary for the people, and he rails against corrupt politicians and oligarchs. He dismisses all the efforts underway here to form a transitional council that will govern Haiti. Class politique qui là y a fait une exclusion côté que y a dit bandi nèg azam baladan. Mais son façon pour ca renouveler système là, Jean Lia parce que système là il vient en bout li. Et quand qui gagne entre monde riche à monde pauvre en Haïti en li trop. Dans le monde entier gagne quand entre monde riche à monde pauvre. Mais Jean fait en Haïti il est indécent. Il vient plus passer 2 à 3 ans depuis qu'il n'a pas né un dialogue. Depuis qu'il a demandé pour tout le monde sur table pour nous dialoguer avec M. Kigenzamio, personne ne peut pas le nous. Il y a un qui est calme. Et dans ce cas, il y a un peu de plus mal que les gens là. Parce que tout autant, nous ne pouvons pas jouer un bout de système. Tout autant, nous ne pouvons pas choisir de mettre tout le monde sur table. Tout autant, vivre ensemble sur table. Pour nous venir, pour nous chiter, pour nous parler. Tout autant, nous ne pouvons pas représenter nous. Parce que je dis, Conseil présidentiel, c'est même ça, nous ne pouvons pas nous. Nous ne pouvons pas nous. C'est même le système qui va régénérer encore pour continuer tout pays, les gens qui sont dans le populaire. Je dis, il faut que nous représentions. Nous sommes capables de dire, ok, nous et nous faisons partie de la solution. Nous sommes ensemble de continuer à faire des solutions pour payer la paix. Now, this is messy. This is so fucking messy because if you guys are remembering my video um, originally about CARICOM, I believe I touched on CARICOM in the last few videos. CARICOM is supposed to be re representing every single political party in Haiti. Well, the main ones anyway, because there's so many, okay? There's so many political parties in Haiti. That's why we have so much of a political shit show. Um, and the Petit Dessalines party was the one that was uh really causing issues because uh they they essentially were like oh well you know they 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 have ties to the gang so you know they're gonna be a problem um so it's interesting i'm not sure what happened to vivant sum vivant sum is what um is supposed to be representing the the gang leaders and stuff so if i'm not mistaken there was a lot of talk about the vivant sum party wanting to put their own president in power which i would assume is barbecue uh, that's interesting because it clearly they're not representing um a majority of the, the haitian parties if Vivant Somme isn't there. Petit Dessalines party isn't there. Who else isn't there? I didn't even look at that shit. I didn't really look because I was just like, ah, chaque jour y'a changé mou and every day they changing people. That's crazy. This is not going to end well. So we have two parties that aren't re represented. Unless, let me, uh, tell. Actually, let me look. Let me see if they did get someone. Oh, okay. Nope. They did get someone for the Petit Dessalines party, but there's nobody for, um, Vive ensemble. So this is gonna be bad. Well, uh, get your pistache, get your popcorn. And some of them have also ransacked libraries. Now, I'm not really sure which gang members this was and why they would do so, but that's what has been going around. Now, I asked a couple people that live in Haiti, um, and funny enough, they were just like, mm, what part of Port-au-Prince? And I'm like, good point. So now, that's why I said, gotta double, triple check. So if anyone lives in Haiti, and could give me more details on that, that would be deeply appreciated. So, like I said, in my next couple of videos, it's, it's gonna be hard to decipher what's true and what's not. If I don't know if something's true or not, I'm definitely gonna tell y'all that. Um, but again, definitely, we gotta help each other out here. We don't wanna be misinformed. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. We're trying to get to 100K, so please share this video. Leave me a comment. Do not forget to like this video of course on your way out and please check out my other channels and uh yeah i'm trying to get this background together i don't know 
it's not working. I think all of this shit gotta come come down. This has literally been here since my uh my 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 era when I first started. So I think I'm just gonna take it down and I don't know. Give me some ideas, y'all. Y'all creative. I don't know. Anyways, like, share, subscribe, do all that, and I'm gonna see y'all next time. Bye.